Welcome to Champagne Sunday. I'm Lauren. Hey, I'm Bonnie. I'm Beth. And we're going to talk about life after divorce. And living the best, the life. best life and the life you love. Yes, living the life you love on that other side. Cheers. 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 Welcome. Welcome, ladies. We have a special guest with us this time. Our friend Carolyn Pistorius is here with us, and Carolyn has been able to accomplish some incredibly fabulous financial things for herself and her family as an educator, which in and of itself is a feat of its own. And so we have brought her here to help us just kind of understand finance. So, so Carolyn, what do we do about money? <laughs> So, money can be scary, money can be overwhelming, money can be all those things. So, one of the great things about my ex is that he has a degree in financial analysis, financial analysis. And so, one of the big takeaways was that all those years of hearing about finances, some of it sank in, I guess, maybe a little, a little, un poquito, some. So, one of the first things is to figure out where you are. Where are you? Where are you with your finances? So you have to have, I think, a glass of wine and a computer. <laughs> a glass of wine is the first check. thing. <laughs> so, first thing I do with my money, glass of wine. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it always helps. So get your computer out, figure out your banking. So when I decided to get real, um, I'll just tell my story. I was standing in my kitchen and some friends were over helping with my new house and y'all when i went to my house i thought it was perfect it had great light it felt like home it was fantastic and then i went back after i signed on the line and it had linoleum in the whole house except for where the carpet was and the carpet had been puked on and they had cats and dogs and it was gross and they had drugged the washer and dryer out. They had taken drawers and cabinet facings. They had stolen light fixtures. They had taken the toilets, the sinks, the vanities. <clears throat> Excuse me. They had taken all the things. Like, it was terrible. They had taken a hacksaw and cut the power. I mean, it had been in um, foreclosure, so I got it super cheap, which was great. And the guy who was my um, real estate agent, he was like, this is a mistake. You need to go and find a different house. This could take a year. You're living with your ex-husband and you're planning a foreclosure purchase. And this bank could jerk you around. This could take forever. This could be a mess. And they can come back for a year and get their house back. And I was like, it's going to be fine. It's gonna be fine, everything's gonna be fine. This is the house. And he's like, oh, yikes. So I sent out a text and I said, y'all pray. And I sent it to about 30 people and we prayed hard. And I said, y'all, I've put in a bid. I'm so excited. And the next day he called, the guy did, the finance or the um, real estate agent. And he said, hey, I was just calling to see, who did you text from my office? Like, can you send me that list? And I thought, you're weird, but okay, whatever. And I said, why are you asking? And he said, because you got the house. Like, you got the house at what you offered. I offered $100 over half price of what it had sold for the last time. And I thought there's no way I'd ever get that, but I did, so I was excited. And he said, and they'll close ASAP, so two weeks, let's roll. And that's never heard of, and he was like, this is crazy, this is, this is crazy crazy and then all of a sudden you're like oh my gosh this is crazy I'm moving out I don't know what I'm doing I don't know I, I don't know I don't oh my gosh so I sat down and I'm like okay well let's figure this out so I got a piece of paper what do I owe who do I owe how much do I make because I had been married to a financial analyst he knew those things I didn't know those things I had to figure out what's insurance what's homeowners insurance oh I probably need I, I need to pay taxes 
I don't, I don't know how to do all those things. I need, oh, I need a mortgage. Oh, look at that. Let me go get a mortgage. Huh, look at all the things, all the things. So I started making calls and I started making lists. I love to make a good list. Oh my gosh, lists make me so happy. Then I figured out I probably need to put it all on Google so I can carry my list with me. So <laughs> once you get all those first things done, like y'all have been out for a while and you're on your own, well, now you have all those things. So make a Google Sheet, make a list, put it on paper. Who do you owe? What are your credit cards? Who do you have a bank with? Who do you, who are all those things? So one day standing in my house with the people that were helping me and um, they're like, hey, let's go get some dinner. And I said, oh yeah, I'm out. I'm just gonna stay here and keep going, I'm out. And so one of the ladies turned and she goes, okay, what? And I said, well, I don't have any more cash and it's like a Sunday. And she went, yeah. She goes, are you, are you broke? Like you're zeroed out? I said, no, I don't know how to use an ATM. And she looked at me like I was crazy. She says, honey, don't you have a PhD? I said, well, it's not in ATMs. It's in biology and teaching. I can teach with the best of them, but I don't know anything about. And that's when she was like, you're for real. And I was like, I'm for real, for real. So she went with me and we figured out how to use an ATM and punch the little button. And I was like, well, look at that. It just, it just gave me twenties. How cool. <laughs> and so off we went. So long story long, I love me some Dave Ramsey. Uh -huh. He's like the man. I do. Now I don't follow him. I'm not a groupie and I don't have him tattooed on my body, but Dave talks like real talk mm -hmm. and he's not afraid to say, Hey, that was stupid. Hey, that is so stupid. So you got a degree and you owe him $180,000 and you're going to make 20,000 with your degree. Well, that's stupid. And he just calls it straight out and he's Christ based. So I had been to his class before, but well, I didn't do our finances. I did our kids. I did little things with finances, but not big things. So I made a list of what I owed. And then I started chunking away at it. So what do you owe? How much do you bring home? Make a list. And you know what's really hard? It's really hard to tell your kids no. And they weren't used to hearing no because together we made a lot of money. You know, we made 200 and something thousand dollars and this was 10 years ago. But separately, I'm a school teacher. I don't make $200,000. So looking at those kids and saying, is that a want or is that a need? That's a big one. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Yeah. And having that conversation because that's not what they were used to. We lived in Point Mallory Estates. We made plenty of money and we could give our kids just whatever we wanted. But we didn't always give them whatever they wanted even then. But they didn't understand all those things. They didn't know, well, how to play the game, I guess. So you have to kind of start making decisions. And then here's the other thing, telling yourself no. Oh, that's oh. the hardest. And when you're feeling crappy about yourself because you just got a divorce and you feel like a failure and then you're at home alone because your kids are over at the ex's house and they're having a blast because dad has more money so we went out for dinner and then we went to the movies and then we and then we and you're sitting home by yourself and you're like well, that sucks well but what are you doing you're scrolling on your phone even on facebook ads pop up well it's real easy to click on that ad and go, well, I think I need that new makeup or that new handbag or that new, something you really don't need. Like, I really don't wear a lot of makeup. So for me to click on the Laura Geller ad the other day was <laughs> so stupid. You also don't carry purses. I don't. <laughs> Double whammy, <laughs> but Laura Geller will be at my house Thursday. I'm so excited. <laughs> Do you think that this is specific to women that we do not get a financial education. Absolutely. Se, that we, well, especially women, well, Lauren, you're a little younger, but especially women our age, yeah. we were sort of that middle of sort of like you married and your husband was the main provider. Yeah. And you could have a career, but you weren't the main person. Right. And so most of the financial stuff fell to the breadwinner yeah I just think that a lot of women like our age did not get a full financial 
breakdown kind of thing. I know I, I've talked about this before, walking out of my mediation after 11 hours, I knew the math was not going to work out. I was keeping the house, but the house payment was on a doctor's salary, <clears throat> and I'm a nurse. I'm just a nurse. So just a that's nurse. Like, <laughs> Sorry, that's that was be not, that'll be I'm just kidding. kidding. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> so I knew, like, just to make my mortgage and feed my kids, maybe I could make it, but there would be no fun, and I probably wouldn't pay my phone bill, my light bill, my, you know, I mean, right. I just knew the math was not going to add up. But as far as, like, I had never taken out a mortgage. I had never mm. refinanced everything, which it says in your divorce thing. You know, right. you have to refund it. You can't, nothing can be in the name. It was just, it was a very overwhelming sensation. And I think, like, I was down three days thinking about it. Like, it just cut me to my knees. Like, I don't know how to do this. I'm smart. I should be able to figure this out. <laughs> Everybody else nothing. walking on the planet can knows how to do this but me. That's how I felt. And yeah, so, and it's, it's not that you can't figure it out. It's just that overwhelming dread of, I I shouldn't have to figure this out, first of all. Dang it. Yeah. And second yeah. of all, yeah. I, why? Why should I have to figure this out? Yeah. And all the things. I have to make dinner still. I still am the one who's going to buy all the clothes and do all the hair and, and stay all up the at makeup. night when they're sick and, and take do, off work when they're sick yes, and, and yeah. do all the things because I'm still mom yeah and they still want mom when they don't feel good and they still want mama to do all the mama things because you're still mom and you want to still be mom you always want to be mom and 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 and, yeah. and 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 I'm still a teacher yeah and I'm still and at the time I was still with the state organization so I still traveled and I still did stuff for people. And there were times I was winging and dinging, and I'd have somebody call hysterical, but I gotta have this by Monday morning. Well, okay, I'll meet you in the parking lot. Let's see, how can I do this? I can run to UAH, I can get your stuff. I can meet you in the parking lot here. You can get your stuff and go, and then I still have to get my kids here, and I still have one in college, and I still have, and I still have. And on the side, I'm still working an extra job to make enough money to make sure I have, to make sure I have. Mm -hmm. But then my mental health was in the toilet. That's what I felt like. The first, the first whole year, I, I, everybody knows I did not date, but that first whole year I called circling my wagons mm -hmm. because I felt terrible about myself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was because I listened to the talk well, for so long, 21 years of, I don't, you've let yourself go, I, you're not attractive, yeah, nobody's yeah. going to want you, you have no skills, you've been a stay-at-home no. mom, blah, 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 blah. And so I had all those negative things bubbling up, too. And then mm -hmm. I had this new financial responsibility, and it's pretty much, you're well, thrown in the deep end, sink or swim, babe. And, and you're just, it's... Even not just finances, but you're just trying desperately to get on top of everything so that it's normal again. Oh, and that, also, that's, yeah. so that also, some shred of normalcy. But it's like, never the same. I, normal. You know, no. I, I, I it's just know your new what your new normal is going to be, so that it's just stable. But, and on top of that, I, you're, I mean, you're worried about your kids' we, mental stability yeah. too. And we've talked oh. about this, but I'm a year out. I'm just a year out, oh. and I chased my tail for a year. I felt like I, I feel like in the last. Three months, I would say, in the last three months, I'm finally like, things are leveling out, you know. But and, and, it, for and it gets easier with each. Yeah, 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 yeah. And each new norm and each new thing that is not new. Yeah, yeah. I but know. I think that first time, I, I mean, I usually am a person that kind of has it together, or at least I used to be. <laughs> I, that first year, I just felt like I was standing on quicksand uh -huh. with every decision. With like, am I doing the right thing? Should I do this? Should I do this? Should I stay in the house? Can I afford the house? Can I make the numbers crunch? Can I, you know, it was just all those little tiny decisions. And I make lists too. And my list was a legal pad long of all the things that needed to happen. That some of them I. There were about five on there. I could not see how I was going to make them happen. Like, short of a miracle, 
or being struck by lightning. Then it was, nothing was going to make it on that, those five things. So I think it's important that people know, you know, we all feel it when you first get divorced. There's that huge burden kind of weight on your shoulders about now you're in charge of the finances. And yeah, it's just you. With everything else. And it's just you. And it's just you. But there's also a beauty to that. Yes. Uh, like, but, because there's no secrets. Like, I felt like when I was married that I didn't really know what our full oh, I landscape didn't. was. I wasn't allowed to. Well, I, Correct. I, I was in the position that I wanted to and couldn't. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like there were things I didn't know. I, yeah. I will say, that. I was I was but, not allowed to have a credit card. I was not allowed. You know, I had my own bank account, but he had to be on it. We didn't have a joint bank account. I wasn't allowed to see the whole financial picture, but I was supposed to pay all of the bills. But I wasn't supposed to go over this imaginary number. I wasn't supposed to know. So if I went over that number, I got in trouble. But I did not know that number. I mean, like there was all sorts of control, and so it was really hard. I mean, all of this is, I mean, for, you know, I started before that, I got divorced I, I getting credit, that, trying to build credit. Like, like what, in this, like, moment in time, and maybe some people, I just feel like that's not feasible at all. Because no. Because everybody is, it, we're just in a moment where, like, your partner needs to know what, especially if you're going to have responsibility for the finances, you need to know about finances. Right. Well, even, or even if, I mean, I just, I think, in hindsight, I should have always had my own bank account without him on it. That I should never have let that go, but I was so very trusting. You know, yes. I should have always, it should have been important to my partner that I had good credit. And instead, it was important to him that I had no credit. And so I think one of my first step was to establish some kind of credit. Like I got a credit card without him knowing, you know, little things, but it, but that's, but I think mine was <laughs> unique. I don't think Yours everyone has a minus. I, no, I, so I would say not everyone has is, is taken that where you're. I, I just felt like he he financially isolated me <clears> and made. Well, yeah. I didn't know. And all I don't think ours. he did, he didn't do that to be mean to me. I truly don't think he did at the beginning. Maybe at the end he possibly did, but at the beginning he really felt like I was irresponsible with money. And instead of taking the time to train me and include me and make sure I understood everything, he just isolated me and and made sure that nothing could happen. Mine was always lots of questions. Why did you spend this? Why did you do that? Don't. You spend too much. Your mom always spends too much. Always, always, always. Well, raising three girls. 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 Mm. Girls are oh, expensive. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And um, there are always jokes about, you know, we should probably have stock in Tampax, Kotex, whatever. Always jokes. But it was control. It was manipulation. It was all those things. But, but. There needed, there always needs to be a transparency, and that transparency was missing. Mm -hmm. You know, how much was in the bank? I don't know. But did I know when there wasn't money there? Well, somehow some group got my number because I would be up presenting and see this number come up, take a call. Um, you know, there needed to be fifteen thousand dollars put into an account to cover a trade. I don't, I don't even know what that means. Yeah. I, I don't. Oh gosh. I don't understand. But I understand that I have a hundred people looking at me, you know, after break, and I've just taken a call saying you're twenty five thousand short, you're fifty thousand short, you're fifteen thousand short, and I'm going, what? What? How, what? I don't know what the futures are. I don't understand the trading short and long and 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 how did you get my number? And what are you talking about? And I would send that information off and say. Holy cow, blah, blah, blah. So my background is one of being scared, mm -hmm. terrified. Are we going to sink? Are we going under? Are we Are we going to make it? Are we? Are, uh, uh. And he had a level of calmness about things because he understood it more. I had a level of being scared to death because I don't have that understanding. So do I invest? Absolutely. Do I have a... A great understanding of all the ins and outs of all that no but I do okay um, so, so do you invest or do you have an investor both I have an investor who um, she's not here in Alabama she's the one that my dad used um, she's the one that had the time to sit down and go let's look at where you are let's look at where you want to be and let's talk about that future you want what do you want so, have I made mistakes? Absolutely. Have I lost some money? 
Sure, that stock market has dipped, but you don't really lose if you don't take the money out. Um, I will say, made a mistake not too long ago, had some money roll through some kind of account to one of my kids. But you know what? I prayed about it and decided it's really not worth losing a kid over. So did I cringe hard at almost $10,000 roll into a kid that I hadn't intended? Yep. But Woo! Wow! Sorry! That was loud. <laughs> Fantastic. But I decided that child was more important than ten grand. so she's got her college money. I hope yeah. she uses it for college. Moving on. So where am I at now? What would I what would I want for the newly invested or the newly divorced person to do? I would say sit down, get that glass of wine, take that uh, prosecco or whatever just popped and have that, <laughs> Sorry about that have that soul searching moment with yourself where you get a hold of that online bank account and you start looking. Make some account make some Excel sheets. What are you spending your money on? That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Where's it going? You see what's coming in? What's taking it out? Are you eating out too much? My family eats out too much. Are you spending a whole lot of money at the grocery store that maybe, and groceries are expensive, mm -hmm. but maybe we can cut that down a little bit. Are you on Amazon too much? Are you buying stuff on whatever? Are your basic needs being met? And that's where Dave comes in. He says, you start with your four walls and you go from there. And then you start paying off anything that you owe. So, you know, when I walked out, I didn't have a lot of debt, so I'm grateful for that. But um, first, first thing first, I started chiseling away at the mortgage and the car. So I had a van, I traded for a car, my van had a lot of mileage on it, and I needed something with great gas mileage. So I bought this little Jeep, don't think Jeepy Jeep, Jeep, think SUV. Um, Jeep makes a cheap car that's pretty reliable. I love a Jeep. I love a Jeep. Gosh, I love a Jeep. Now, I like the Jeepy Jeeps, if you know what I mean by that, mm -hmm. the big yeah. Wrangler yeah. looking. Yeah, I've got kids have those. Yeah, yeah okay. those are fun. Um, that's not what I got. Um, and the reason I got it was because the manager at the Jeep place here in Decatur, I showed up one night when I thought they were all gone because I need to analyze things. Oh, I'm a science person. And so I was standing there looking at it going, oh, I like that. And I was there in a suit and heels. And he walks up behind me and he goes, ma'am, in his best southern drawl. And he says, is this for you or one of your kids? And I'm like, it's for me. I've always wanted a Jeep. And he says, can I show you this? And he showed me the SUV. And he said, if you drive a lot of miles, he said, that Jeep will beat you to death. And I was like, I drive a lot of miles. I probably go 35 to 40,000 a year. And he was like, it will shake you to death. And I was like, okay. So, <laughs> got to be a little practical. But here was the thing that did it for me. So, I would work extra. I taught kids in China. I would get up at 4, 4.30 in the morning, and you would hear me going, ba-ba-ball. And you'd hear, ba-ba-ball. And back and forth with these little kids. I did that for a couple of years. I used two different companies to do that. I did it late at night. I did it in the morning. I tried to do it where it didn't impact my kids. I gave the ACE. ACT exams on Saturdays. I do that seven plus times a year. I work at ball games. I do all kinds of little side hustles and all that money gets shuffled off to the side. It was paying off the house. It was paying off the car. It was making sure we had the extra fun stuff. Um, we took vacations every year, but we budgeted for those vacations and there would be a mason jar sitting in the middle of the table. And sometimes I'd say, do you want to go on a good vacation? or do you want to go out to eat? And there were some times we'd say, do you want to go out to eat? This is a, let's go to the Mellow Mushroom, kick back on the patio and just chill kind of night. And that's okay. And sometimes it was, are we just being lazy? Because there's always food in our house. And we would get up and fix something to eat and say, we want to go on vacation. And when I say vacation, we did some little vacations. We did Memphis, we did one lady let me stay in her house one time for nine days down in Destin, Florida. So we had some God interventions and that was truly a God thing. Um, who knew, she, first of all, she had a house. Second of all, who knew she'd give it to me free. Mm -hmm. So come on. Um, those things happened not every year, but sometimes. And so we stayed with some family and visited family. We did all kinds of things, but every year we went somewhere. We planned for it, we budgeted for it. 
and it might be twenty dollars this month that we put towards it next time it might be 200 we put something towards it every month and we celebrated that so traveling big i love to travel mm -hmm. i love to see the world and i think my girls need to see the world so i make that a priority now house is paid off cars are paid off i don't owe anybody anything that i know of anything at all period how many years how many years out are you i am seven years out almost eight so before i turned 50 and at that point i had been out let's say i'm 54 so i had been out a good four years and at that point i'd paid for my house and my car so and then i bought a truck so i went in debt for a little while for the truck but that was a that was an issue with the ex so and a child needed a car so i bought myself one and gave her the jeep for a while so, I'm not saying I've never been in debt. I'm just saying I'm not there right now. And we did 21 days in Europe last summer, what two summers ago. Wow. And that was paid for, that wasn't on credit. That was not on credit. Um, so, most of it was paid in advance, like we chunked it away. And then we bought what we needed when we needed it. And when I got home, I didn't have a big credit card bill waiting on me. So, that was a relief. That's good. So, yeah, it's doable. But do we make some hard decisions sometimes? Yeah. I think we have to make hard decisions. And that's that's a personal conversation in my own brain sometimes. Okay, so do you have credit cards? I do. Do you use them? I use my Redstone Federal credit card all the time. Okay, why? And that goes against what Dave I says. I know, so I'm say, that's an anti-Dave thing. So. That's against Dave Ramsey. Does he say not to use credit cards? Mm -hmm. He I does. Don't, yeah, I don't have one. Because of that. I pay cash. If I can't pay cash, I don't get it. And that, and I did that because, well, I have an addiction to needlepoint, as everybody knows. So, <laughs> and I had a shop for years, so I have back stock and I have fibers and all that. But if I had a credit card, I know I would spend it on that or shoes. Okay. So, I just don't have one. And then, you know, everything has, a, a, every dollar has a name. Every at dollar the, has a name. At, at the first of the month, I know how much I'm going to get paid most of the time. Sometimes I make bonuses, but you know. Right. Um, so, you know, my house is first, then all my utilities. I do have a car payment because I had a, well, we had a promise of a car that didn't happen for both my drivers when they turned 16. So my car that had 264,000 miles got rolled to my daughter, and I got a car because I traveled. You know, right. about 800 miles, some some weeks, 800 miles. I drive so, to ADAC, yeah, so yeah. I understand that. So I did do that, and I thought, you know, I've always had good luck with this certain type of car that I drive, and I know the dealership, and I've always, I've never had any problems, you know, getting service or anything like that. So I stayed with that car. I got a good deal on it. I do have a car payment, and I do have a house payment, but I do not have any credit card. I have no other debt. You know Perfect. Except for now with this tree, which is, I'm in a crisis thing right now. Crisis with the, with the, what does he say, Uncle? Uh, who moved into your bedroom? Yeah, I can't believe this expression. <laughs> but Dave will tell you the first thing yeah. to do is to have a thousand dollars in an emergency fund, mm -hmm. and um, I'm a big believer in that because emergencies happen. And so one of the first things I did was to start putting, I slide money the first. Everything's automated, let me just say that. My house payment was automated, my car payment was automated. Everything came out automatically because I'm a little spacey. And I was always afraid because I hadn't had to pay bills, I would forget to pay the bills. And not that I would forget maybe my house payment, but I might forget to pay utilities or I might forget yeah. to pay something. Things, yeah. So everything comes out automatically. Um, the girls love to get the mail. That was something we didn't do. so. They love to run out and see what's in the mailbox, which, you know, now it's getting less and less because we don't get good mail. Like, I don't know if we used to ever get good mail, but you know what I mean. Nothing really fun comes Catalogs from Catalogs are fun. Catalogs and, <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't get those anymore because I called them all and had it stopped. So, anyway, um, but they like to get that. And so then where do the bills go? And, well, where's the important stuff? And, like, you find it days when you should have had it. So, I try to automate everything I can. And um, to include tithing, I figured out I wasn't tithing like I was supposed to because 
if you sit in the choir, do they ever pass the plate to the choir? <laughs> By the way, they don't. Who knew? And then, do you think you're going to remember to come down out of the choir loft and write a check and put it in a plate? Well, where are the plates? I don't know. Well, who collects the money? I don't know. Well, where does... I don't know those things. So I looked up online and look at that. They've made church easy for us. Um, great. So that automatically comes out and goes right in. Yay. Actually hits my credit card. So I get 3% back. Thanks, Jesus. And um, he's helping me go to Europe. <laughs> I tell you what, you give me 10, I give you three back. See? So, <laughs> it's a deal. It's, it's a deal. deal. It's a deal. So, so do I have a credit card? I do. But part of that is because I travel, and I travel so much with work. At the time, we stayed in hotels. I was averaging 60 nights in a hotel at the time. Right. So I didn't know how to swing that and do it and stay afloat and, 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 and. So, yeah. And so I use my Redstone card, and I pay it off about every three or four days because I get nervous. What if I don't have enough money? Oh, my gosh. Da, 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 da. So I forever hawk it just to make sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I brought my, I did bring my, my envelopes, okay. and um, I don't really travel with them like I used to, like I used to. I used I, to carry mine everywhere. I carried my envelopes, <laughs> they were my little safety thing, and um, one time, literally, I was getting off the bus at a Women of Joy conference, I think a Phil Waldrop conference, and my friend Maria gets on this van. Now, God love the people that were on the van, because they didn't know me. Like, most of them were like, oh, yeah, how do we know Carolyn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't know me, know me, so nobody would say anything. Y'all, I had 157 stitches running down the middle of my face from skin cancer. Not one person said a word. You know, most people would be like, hey, what happened to your face? No, not a word. They were like, it didn't even look like I was Frankenstein. Not one person said anything. Maria jumps out of the van when she gets there. She goes, girl. Now, she's on the far end of the van. I'm in the very back. She goes, I just want you to know one of the ladies, she had cancer. They took off half her head. Is that going to bother you? Is that going to bother you? Because if it is, we'll just pull you out during that. We'll put you somewhere. It'll be fine. And um, grab your purse because we got somebody we need you to meet. All the ladies in the van are like, <gasps> like, she just, she just said that about her face. Clutch your <gasps> pearls moment. Yes, it was so, <laughs> so scary. I'm like, nah, I'll be fine. Who are we meeting? She goes, get your purse. You need your purse. And I'm thinking, do I have my purse? I think I brought a purse. Because I always carry just this little thing. You see, it's got a little cash sticking yeah. out. And it's got a little credit card, my one little card. And then these are gift cards, and then that's gift cards. Anyway, so I grab my purse, and off we go. We go walking in, and there's Dave Ramsey and his daughter, Rachel Cruz, and she's like, hey, show him, show him, show him. I know she's got him. I know she's got him. Well, he's standing there just horrified looking at my face going, because I take the bandages <laughs> off, because they're like sliding and oh, yeah. sweating. And so he's just like looking at all these stitches going, and she's going, come on, show him, show him. And I'm like, what? Maria. And she goes, show him the, show him the envelopes. So I'm like digging around in my purse and I'm like, she goes, see, she's got one for the conference. She can buy your books. <laughs> <laughs> and here's this oh, poor baby going, so, so good to meet you. Could you tell me about your face and can we maybe pray over that? Can we just pray <laughs> over your face? <laughs> so did I bring my envelopes? I sure did. So I wanted to talk to you about this. So I pick a number. I just pick a number. And this is what I'm saving. So I'm saving for Christmas, and I wanted that cash. So I stop and think about, what do I want? What do I want for the girls? What do they want? Um, and I save for a cow. And so I have an envelope literally called cow. My girls are like, nobody understands that. But we buy half a cow every year. Okay. And sometimes we get a pig. And that's one of our big money-saving things that we do every year. Um, because that only costs us like 900 bucks. And then we have meat all year long. So good. And then house projects, because my house still needs some love. Just a little love. And I have a pool, and we were just talking about pools, mm -hmm. and they're so expensive. But we had a pool in Point Mallard, and then this one had a pool, and so I want a pool. And I need a new pool liner eventually, and they're really expensive. Mm -hmm. And then I have Ubba, okay? So I have my Christmas money I'm saving. My, there's my cow. These are the ones that I need to work on, and these are the ones that are fully funded already. And so here's my emergency fund, because you need to be ready for the unexpected. Here's January 15th, and if you're not a teacher, you don't understand that, but Bonnie, do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Why do I have a January 15th envelope, do you think? 
we get paid January, uh, mm-hmm. December 20th. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah, you don't get paid yeah. again until, until the end of January. January. Yep. And so there's like literally. And that's when all the after Christmas stuff hits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you go without a paycheck from the like second For week like, of December all, until the end half. of January. Yeah. yeah. So if we want to do anything fun or if we want to go out to eat, there's no money starting January 15th. You're like busted broke. So I tell all my new teachers that come through when I was an administrator, I would tell them, get you an envelope and mark it January 15th. And they're like, do you really do that? And I'm like, I really do that. And if you can see this envelope, it's actually molded because I keep it and I've kept it for forever in case I ever need it. But this is year 33. Surely I've got this down. (laughs) Surely this isn't my first rodeo. Okay, so the rest of these. Um, So I'm doing Weight Watchers and I've lost uh, 50 pounds. And so this is from a new wardrobe. But I'm not there yet, so we're still working on it. And so we got all the all the envelopes. And here I brought you all some envelopes in case you wanted some. And they're blank in case you wanted to set a goal. Mm-hmm. Subtle, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna Pit take him. one because I have a goal. Oh, and I forgot something out in the truck. But anyway, I'll tell you about it. So I I'm guess gonna, I need to put some. Yeah, I'm bringing you all the envelopes. We're yeah, sensing. I need the envelopes. envelopes. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for part one of the money series with Dr. Carolyn Pistorius. We hope you join us for the next two Sundays for the final two episodes. Thank y'all for joining us for Champagne Sunday. See you next week, girls. Cheers. Have a good week. Cheers. Cheers.